How did I become a chief data scientist? It's an interesting story because when I became a chief data scientist, there weren't a whole lot of them. And as a data scientist, my transition into the chief data scientist role was pretty rapid. So what ended up happening is the more complex my projects got, the more of the business I needed in order for those projects to be successful. That's where I really started to be, uh, begin to understand that data science doesn't exist in a vacuum. These models weren't going to live by themselves on my laptop or in a distributed server environment off to the side. They had to be touched by customers, by internal or external customers. They had to be adopted. Other teams had to be on board with contributing to the project. They had to be on board with specifying and, and putting a lot of work into making this happen, making this successful. And so I realized if I didn't do some of the strategy work necessary and some of the team building and, and coalition building, I call it now, work that goes into making a project successful, I couldn't do complex projects. The only things we could do were these one-offs that were a little better than prototypes, but they weren't returning the types of value that businesses were expecting me to return. So in order for me to be successful, I had to start doing a little bit more strategy work. I had to build up all of these processes up front. I had to get buy-in from the C-suite because I learned very quickly, you can't go bottom up with machine learning products. It simply doesn't work. You have to start at the top. You have to get buy-in from the C-suite and at the very highest levels because there's a lot of change organization-wide that has to happen in order for a complex project to be connected to the business in the first place. But once it's done, to be integrated, adopted, and be successful, continuously improved over time, which requires people to commit budget for not these short little bursts, but over long time periods. There are behavioral changes throughout the business that are going to have to happen to support more complex data science and machine learning projects. Some projects are long-term. You can only do so much in six weeks or eight weeks. And if you don't have higher level buy-in, that may be the longest window you have. There are some projects that lose support after 90 days. And I mean, you can get a lot done, but really you can't provide the type of value that you can doing a six month project or even some year long projects where pieces are delivered incrementally and it's only at the very end that you realize how much value you've really delivered to the business. It's only then that they realize the ROI that they're expecting is these longer term, more complex projects. And I got pretty into building out all those pieces. A lot of times the company didn't have the capabilities to build and support these models. So I ended up having to hire people. And that means I have to justify all that additional spend to the C-suite. And then when I handed off hiring to someone else, I found out, well, there's not a lot of people that are very good at attracting talented data scientists, assessing really even who those are, and then getting them on board and bring them onto the team. So I had to take that on. And you can start hearing my role is basically scope creep for my role. If I wanted the model to be successful, I had to start taking on all of these additional roles. And finally, 2014, I found myself basically running a team that I had built. I had built out the small component of strategy at that point, which was that business's AI strategy. I do a whole lot bigger strategies now, but that was my first itty bitty AI strategic component. I was leading the team. I was doing the job. I was talking to other pieces of the organization, getting people bought in and trained. And I was a chief data scientist and the company just said, all right, look, there's your title. Congratulations. You're a chief data scientist. The next year, a startup gave me the chief data science, chief data scientist title. And this one's a funny story. I was one of the earliest employees at this startup and we were at a conference. We couldn't figure out what to call me. And so we looked around and we said, chief data scientist. Yeah, you're the chief data scientist. So my second chief data scientist title, not quite as intentional as the first. The C-suite did not uh, have a meeting together for a while and then bring me in and say, okay, we're making you chief data scientist for the business. This was a f far more ad hoc, but you have to realize 2014, 2015, the chief data scientist title, no one really understood what it was. Everyone wanted it to be a strategic role, 
but the role was also very, very tactical. Most chief data scientists, even now, are still practicing data scientists. That I do that in the role too. I take a project from business need all the way to production and monitoring at pretty much all of my interim CDS gigs. That's what I do. I teach companies how to do data science by taking a project from beginning to end and creating, like I talked about at the very beginning, creating all those components that are necessary for data science to be monetized, productized, and operationalized and build the value stream. And then the actual data science workflow, building out a modern data science workflow. So I have to do cradle to grave. And that's sort of how I became a data, a chief data scientist is out of necessity. We couldn't get anything into production as a team unless somebody started doing more than just data science. And that is my meandering path into the chief data scientist's role. Since 2014, 2015, I've taken on the interim chief data scientist title a number of times, far more intentional and understanding the role a whole lot better each time that I took it, being able to do the job with more, more experience, more intentional and pre-planning up front, more of a process to come in, define the role of chief data scientist, build out the capabilities, create that strategy, take that first project from beginning to end. And then I get to hire my own replacement. A lot of times I get to promote my own replacement. It's amazing. And then I get to go on to the next one. And that's what I love doing. That's why I love that interim chief data scientist role, because it's great to come in, be there at the beginning, build it out, do that first home run, kind of clear the lane for every project that comes after it, and then hand it over to someone else who I've helped train and mentor into that role. It's an amazing job. And I'm glad, even though I sort of stumbled into it, I didn't do it intentionally. Kind of wish I had. Would have been a better story about, uh, yes, so I intentionally. No, it was a bit accidental. But that's how I landed in the chief data scientist role.